And so, um, um, as I said, you know, we're, we're really looking at uh, uh, really talking about the positive side of, of life, of entrepreneurship, of moving forward, and, and how that can be so important to you becoming successful. So before we begin, I wanted to say a little bit about the Rothman Institute of Innovation and Entrepreneurship. And so it's been around over 30 years. I've been executive director for about three and a half years. Sue Slavin and Maura Panuski are the other two, two part members of the, of the team. And our focus is really on entrepreneurship. We're focusing on, on family business entrepreneurship, veteran entrepreneurship, uh, student entrepreneurship, urban entrepreneurship, and small business entrepreneurship. And, and we're, we're really almost evangelical about it, that this is really the foundation of the economy. It's the foundation of jobs. It's the foundation of personal well-being. So we really like to highlight people who have been very, very successful and who are very, very positive. But we also do more things than other the entrepreneurship. We now were, and some of you may have heard early on uh, before we started, uh, we have an executive coaching program, our first executive coaching program that's going to start uh, in a few weeks. And the idea of executive coaching, and whether they're for small businesses or big businesses or executives, is to really help people become the best that they can be. And the International Coaching Federation provides a certification. And so if you go through our 132-hour course, you can be certified. So we really encourage people to think about that because the coaching paradigm really gets you to think differently about motivating people and really helping them grow. We also have diversity, equity, and inclusion consulting within our, uh, within our, our, our team, and we do a whole bunch of other programs. So, uh, but without further ado, um, Erica, I'm going to ask you to introduce yourself, and then uh, maybe you or the, the other women can introduce themselves. So Erica, why don't, why don't you introduce yourself? Okay, for a quick second, I was like, oh my goodness, I can't hear anything. Um, hello, everyone. My name is Erica Lasan, and I am a joy strategist and creative consultant, as well as the founder of Journey to Purpose, J-O-Y-R-N-E-Y. <laughs> and what I do is I help women, <clears throat> creative women and entrepreneurial moms, sorry, really reclaim time, energy, and space for themselves so that they can begin to figure out or rediscover the things that bring them joy so that they're able to align themselves with their purpose, whatever that may look like. It comes in a number of forms, but that's essentially the crux of the work. That's the root of it all. Wonderful. Wonderful. Now, who do you, who did you bring with us today? Oh my goodness. Today I have brought two of my favorite, favorite people and some amazing clients of mine. Aysen Malta of Aysen Malta Salon. She is the founder and CEO. And then I have Shaz Taylor of Shaz's Art Studio. Um, sorry, Shaz Studio. <laughs> Shaz Art Studio here. I am so sorry. Girl, I have butchered it. But <laughs> she's an amazing designer and artist. Um, and I think that that's part of what um, the beauty is about her work. Like you can't really put it into a box because she is so creative, um, but she does home design and she also does um, art. So uh, these are two of my favorite clients and I'm really excited to have them here today to share their journey to purpose. Wonderful. The, uh, so first I wanna start with you and what we're gonna ask as I did on my show, I always like origin. So where did you grow up and, and how did you get into this, this idea of, of, of kind of the positive affirmation of business? Um, so I grew up in Baltimore, Maryland, and I moved to New Jersey for college. I attended Fairleigh Dickinson University, whoop, whoop. Right. <laughs> and um, <clears throat> coming into this journey to purpose was really a culmination of things that I've done over the past 20 years, being a creative, but not necessarily understanding the power of uh, living passionately in your purpose. Mm -hmm. um, and it really started after I graduated from FDU during the recession. You know, I always say that there's joy to be found in the journey because after the recession, I couldn't find a job. I was desperate for someone to hire me and see my value and it just wasn't happening. Mm -hmm. And um, at that period, I think I was now looking back mildly depressed, but I didn't necessarily see it that way at the moment. Mm -hmm. um, I was crying every day. I was uninspired. I was unfulfilled. And at one point, rather than crying about the fact that nobody would hire me, um, my uh, fiance, well, now husband, he was my boyfriend then, who I also met at FDU, shout out to FDU for the love connection, um, was like, well, Erica, what is it that you want to do? And I said, I want to do everything. And then I really just went on this journey to rediscovering myself and the things that brought me joy and made me who I was. And um, that was the first step in kind of 
creating a framework that I now use with my clients, which is journeying to joy by going on a joy quest. Um, and that really just kind of started it all, asking myself the question of, well, what is it that you want to do? And then asking myself, well, what would it actually take to get there? And then mapping out steps to get there along the way. And now I help other entrepreneurial people do that as well. <laughs> wonderful, wonderful. And, and uh, I say, I mean, you're, you're effusive and your your positive nature is contagious. It really is uh, contagious. And so, um, so, so talk to me about how do you work with a business? Because one, one of the things when we interviewed, when I interviewed you on the, on the, on the TV show, Entrepreneur State of Mind, on RV, RVN television, we talked about all that you do. And I said, this is fantastic. I, you know, I'd love to really see how does it work? How does it, you know, how does it work? So wh why don't you talk about how you met these folks and interacted with them and, and helped them grow? Yeah, um, I'd love to. So um, the journey to purpose is actually a three-step process. And the goal of this work is to help people rediscover, reconnect, and recommit to their purpose and identity and joy. Mm -hmm. And the three-step process starts with first, journeying to joy like i mentioned with a program that i have on my site it's self-paced and guided called the joy quest through this process you begin to really understand the things that bring you joy the many things that can bring you joy but through this you also can become very highly aware of the things that potentially um align you with your purpose, which then brings you to step two of the journey to purpose, which is propelling your purpose. Because so, I am a- So before, Joyce, so before, but that's, that's powerful stuff, what you're talking about. And so just even understanding what brings you joy is something that most people don't even think about. So, mm -hmm. I mean, is that true? Do you find that most people said, I have no idea? Yes, <laughs> even more people than you would think uh, right. are really just trying to rediscover what brings them joy. And especially when it comes to parents, um, mm -hmm. a lot of the women that I work with or a lot of the women that I speak with, um, one of the main questions is, well, how do I rediscover my joy? And I'm like, you do what makes you feel good. You know, mm -hmm. I always say one feel good thing at a time. Um, but I think that there is a deeper process that a lot of people aren't aware of because it's not just about rediscovering what brings you joy, but there's also a process of unlearning so that you can reconnect with the things that really light you up. Um, because there are a lot of things that we do that are kind of set us on autopilot just based on uh, the, uh, the things that are surrounding us, the people that we've engaged with in the past, culture, traditional expectations, societal norms. And so it's really this process of going through the joy quest is really one of helping you unlearn so that you can relearn the things that actually align you with your joy and purpose. Well, so, and that's powerful. Again, I, I'm as, you know, as a man, but I have a 17 year old daughter. So I've learned a lot about about women and how they think and and so on and 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 how self-deprecating you know un, unnecessarily women can be and and I and I think I, the response of some of the moms you work with I suspect is I don't have time to worry about my joy I'm taking care of the kids how do I have time to do that is that is that true Oh my gosh is it it is so true and, and it's 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 almost sad I want to say that it's like a little bit of like an epidemic but I feel like this is just something that's happened all the time um, mm -hmm. but. I think our generation is bringing more of a voice to it and light to it and saying, this is not something that we really want for ourselves um, or not even that we don't want it for ourselves, but engaging with it in a different way. Because I love my kids, you know, I, I am a proud parent. Um, because of my children, I was able to step into my purpose and really own it. But it, it really took a moment of me realizing how self-deprecating I was being to myself and not prioritizing my joy and the things that light me up, like being creative and expressing myself creatively and stepping into that, being vulnerable and transparent with not only myself, but the people around me, that kind of got me to this place of like, okay, well, now that I've acknowledged this and I own it, what is it that I want to do about it? Um, so it it's really important that more women begin to like own the the power of their story but also just like living in their truth authentically in their truth whatever that may be um and claiming what it is that they want could could, could we go through each of the steps with the with the, the two panelists with with shaz yeah. And, yeah and see okay so that first part how did you help me if, if they could talk about it, how did you do this for how did you find your joy how, you know you know talk, talk about what you the process you all went through it'll be fascinating um, well, actually, I was going to bring up Aisa next because she was okay. actually part of the step two of the journey to purpose. Oh, okay. Which, All right, good. Okay. 
which is propelling your purpose after you've uncovered the things that bring you joy and you have clarity around it because your joy, I highly believe, is aligned with your purpose. It's just a matter of sifting out which of those joy-led things are your things that you should be doing for a living. And Aysen was a part of the Dream Academy. So I will let her tell you about that. It's a six-week experience um, to really craft out a vision and begin to strategically um, take the steps that are needed to align yourself with the vision. So I'll let you share, let her share her experience. <laughs> Thank you. Can everybody hear me? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So hi, my name is Ison. Um, I own Ison Malta Salon in Morristown, New Jersey. And just a little background so that I can, so you can better understand why Erica's um, program helped me so much. I am a tomboy athlete. I played basketball in college. I have four older brothers. I never wore anything besides sweatpants and my hair was always in a high ponytail. Um, and one year in my second year of college, right after the basketball season ended, I met somebody that um, I just like befriended somebody. I didn't know him. And he said to me, what do you plan on doing? And I was going to school for accounting because I love numbers and business and I was bored and I didn't really want to do it anymore. And I said, I don't know, but I'm dropping out. Mm -hmm. And he goes, well, if you don't have a plan, like what, what do you mean you're dropping out? He's like, I was like, I don't know. I'm dropping out. I'll figure it out. I'll play basketball. I'll just do something. He goes, well, my cousin goes to beauty school. Maybe you should go. Mm -hmm. I was like, well, you clearly don't know me because what am I going to do in beauty school? Like I've never touched a blow dryer a day in my life. My hair is curly. I don't even know the first thing about doing hair. And he goes, well, you don't have anything else to do. So I said, okay. So I signed up and I went to beauty school and it was amazing. It was so fun. I didn't have any really bad habits to break. So I was learning everything from scratch. And um, when I graduated, I was like, this is exactly what I want to do and I would have never known if some stranger never mentioned it to me because mm -hmm. nobody that knew me was ever going to suggest something like that <laughs> and as I'm going through my journey and doing hair I'm kind of like oh, okay I'm getting a little bored um I have to figure out what about this is making me happy why was I so excited mm -hmm. and I learned how much I love people mm -hmm. I just want to know everything about you, why you are the way that you are, what triggers you have and why they're there. Like I should have gone to school for psychology, but I took one psych class and I was like, never mind. <laughs> but I'm, it's like the next best thing. I'm basically a therapist for my clients. And it's amazing because it's so raw and there's such a stereotype around being a hairstylist. You know, you're always put together. you got a face full makeup, you do whatever, you know, whatever makes you happy. But I am a very natural stylist. I just am here to help everybody embrace who they already are. So you don't have to fit the mold in anything. Mm -hmm. And if that means you want to wear sweatpants and put your hair up in a ponytail, I'm just going to teach you how to do the ponytail, you know, like whatever that means for you, I like to offer for my clients. So during this journey, um, I, Erica, uh, Erica and I got together, we connected and she had her dream Academy that I decided to join because it was different for me. Um, we made a vision board. And I am somebody that would rather write you a research paper than cut and paste and do art and crafts. So I was like, okay, you know what? I'm just gonna try something new. That's how I got into hair. Let me just do this thing. And um, when, we, when we started, it was definitely a struggle for me, but Erica was kind of like holding my hand throughout the whole process. And when we made the vision board, I got to see everything I wanted to do visually. You know, it's one thing to like write a to-do list, and it's right. another thing to see that list in action, right? And so like I'm visualizing it physically on paper instead of just like in my head. Then I, so I opened my salon six months before COVID hit and I took her class right around that time and um, COVID hit and my salon shut down for three months. Wow. Terrifying. Um, and I'm, I'm lost. I don't know when I'm going to open. I don't know what to do. My clients are reaching out to me for help and I don't know what to do. So I went to my vision board because I was like, okay, I mean, this is what they're for. So let me go, let me go to it. And I'm seeing like, I have this plan. I want to hire people. I want to do this stuff. And I'm looking at the steps and the order that I want to do it in, but a pandemic just hit that wasn't planned. So what next? I skipped a few steps while everybody was laying people off. I noticed that in one of my visions I had employees I was like okay 
well, when my open, when my salon opens, I'm going to need people. I got to make the money back that I'm losing in three months. Mm -hmm. So I look at this vision board, I'm going back to it and I'm like, I'm just going to hire. Everyone's firing. I'm hiring. Let's go. And I found people like people were looking for work because other people were letting them go. And it just, I came back from um, the pandemic, just like full force with the staff and just one of my highest sales, it was the first month back after COVID. Wow. And it was really like eye-opening mm-hmm. for someone like me who is like by the book, everything in order, write the list, write, the, write everything down. Don't visualize it, don't create it. And so when I got to see it on paper and I got to be able to visualize how I can, instead of checking off in order, skip some steps and but strategically skip that, you know, veer off course on purpose, not because I got lazy or because I fell off the track. It was like, no, I just needed to find, create a new track and make it make sense for my current situation. Mm-hmm. And um, that was definitely something new for someone like me, you know, and I, I always like to encourage people to try something they've never done. And joy feels so far away. Like it feels like something you you personally can't reach like well you got there but I can't you know um speaking to people all day what I've learned is the number one thing people want in life is just to be happy Mm -hmm. and people think the number one thing is money like that just seems to be the the go-to answer but money is just a means to get to where you want to be to really just ultimately be happy and um it's interesting because you don't really get there you have to figure out what it is that makes you happy like what erica teaches and helps you try to figure out and then the money just follows Mm -hmm. the the path just kind of opens up the things just come to you and they find you so if you're someone that believes in law of attraction that's how it works okay Mm -hmm. you just you got to find your center and what is good for you and even if it doesn't happen overnight, it's going to happen in three months. It's going to happen in a year, but it's not going to happen in thin air. You have to do the work. And I think Erica has the perfect system in helping people kind of figure it out. And she doesn't leave you hanging. Like you're done with the program and you have some questions. You just go back to her. She's always available. And I think that people have fear in doing things alone. Mm-hmm. And most classes and programs that you do, they're there, to, you know, you pay. They do their six weeks and then they're like, okay, you're a free bird, fly, you know, good luck. Don't call me. (laughs) It's like they move on. But Erica is kind of just always there. Even if she's not there day to day, you know that she's going to be there if you need anybody to just kind of bounce ideas back off of someone that's already been through the journey with you, you know, so sorry if I'm talking too much, but I really love the whole experience was just so new for me and so effective. Um, and I really, I really feel like it would, if it's helped somebody like me, I Mm -hmm. definitely think it would help somebody else. You just need to be, you just need to have an open mind and be ready to accept being happy. That's like really scary for a lot of people because Mm -hmm. people are so comfortable kind of being miserable because Mm -hmm. it's just what they're used to. And so being happy is scary because you grasp it and you don't want to lose it, but you just kind of have to be open to allowing yourself to feel all of it. You know, happiness isn't 24 seven. Everybody has a bad day. Everybody has a bad moment. But generally speaking, you want to know that you feel like your full self and you're true to who you are, not what's happening around you. And you are happy with the person that you are today. You know, wonderful. Oh, that's what, what testimony. That's um, that's really, that's really <laughs> fantastic. I mean, there, there, there's so much in there. I mean, you start out with with you're in a profession that was totally opposite of what 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 you thought you were. And, yeah. and, love it. and so it's, um, you know, and that's how do we, and, and, and Erica, I wanted you to go back. We want to hear Shaz, um, how do you, you know, how do you help women to pursue things? Cause so often women say they can't do it. I can't do this. I can't do that. I've never done this. You know, what, 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 what advice, you know, do you have to say, you know, you can do it, that you actually can, you can do something and you should explore things, you know, Erica, Asen, Chaz, any of you, what, what, how do you do that? Because I see that a lot in my business. I see a lot of what I can't do that. It's not me. Um, well, I, I don't know if you mind me taking this question, but or we could all answer it. But I honestly believe that we should 
always choose to move forward with a faith over fear mindset. Because when you think about it, right, um, any decision that you make is one or the other. It falls into one of the two categories. And if you're not moving by faith, and when I think of joy, the things that light us up most and like really align us with our purpose are the things that are light. They are the things that lift us. They are the things that radiate from us and then shine into the lives of others. So then they're able to like soak it up, do whatever they do with it, and then put it out into the world. Like that's our job all of us, like the human race in general. Um, and when I think about um, moving in anything other than faith and pursuing anything other than your joy, the mindsets that you're probably feeding into to do the latter is it's all fear-based. So yeah. if you are going to make a decision, which would you rather choose? The one that lights you up and elevates you or the one that like drags you down and leaves you bound and limited, you know? Mm -hmm. So um, I, when people come to me personally with that question, that's what I look to. Well, is the decision that you're making right now based in fear or are you moving by faith? And if you're mm -hmm. unsure of what faith, like moving by faith looks like in, I am someone who subscribes to the Christian faith, right? But you don't necessarily have to be a Christian in order to even believe this, mm -hmm. right? It's just a matter of, do you want to be lifted or do you want to be limited? You know, one of the two. Wonderful, wonderful. Uh, so Shaz, let's, let's uh, Erica, do you, want, you want to set her up too? Yes. Okay, so Shaz, I'm going to get you right, girl. I'm sorry. <laughs> so this is Shaz of Shaz Taylor Design Studio, right? Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> Sorry, I am so sorry. I was a little nervous, could you tell? Um, but Shaz is someone who took part in step three of the journey to purpose. So I think that this is also a testament to the fact that you don't necessarily have to follow all three steps in order. Um, mm -hmm. Because it, it really also depends on where you are personally in your journey, which is why I think it's so important to have conversations with people before it's like, sign up for my stuff. You know, because Shaz is someone who is very clear on what brought her joy. She's also someone who is very um, sure of what her purpose is. But when she signed up for the journey to purpose, she started with step three, which is activating accountability. So journeying to joy, propelling purpose and activating accountability. Chaz is also a wonderful mom and wife. Um, but with her, one of the things that she was looking to do was reclaim more time, right? Energy and space to focus on her art. Um, so with that, Shaz uh, signed up for my coaching program, most monthly coaching program, and we got her aligned with some strategies and joy-led systems so that she could create sustainable success in um, really just doing more of the things that she loves. So I'll let Shaz share her experience. <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, welcome, welcome. Do you want to tell you, uh, you're on mute, a mute, take off the mute. Okay. Perfect. Can you hear me now? Go. Yeah, we can hear you. Yep. Yep. <laughs> perfect. Perfect. My name is Shaz Taylor, and I am an, a fine visual artist and um, interior and production designer. Mm. So I have a background. Well, let me back back up. So I am a self-taught artist. Okay. Oh, wow. Wow. I, I taught myself how to paint and draw. I was one of those kids that got in trouble for drawing on the walls, like <laughs> always, always, always drawing. Yeah. And um, my my family was quite supportive of me pursuing the arts, but I think at that time when I was growing up, it's like, you know, even though they were supportive, there was like this mental thing. It's like, oh, you might not make a living as an artist, so maybe you should go into something else that's artistic-ish. <laughs> so, so I ended up getting my bachelor's degree from the School of Art Institute of Chicago. So I thought it was like, a win-win. I'm going to an art school, but I'm studying interior architecture, right? Mm -hmm. And so that's what I did, and that's what I pursued. And I ended up getting a job right away at a high-end residential company for interior design in Chicago, like August, and I graduated in June. So it was just like amazing, wow. right? Wow. <laughs> However, <laughs> like Erica was talking about that recession. Oh, I got laid off with everybody else. And, <laughs> and I just was like, okay, what do I do next? Um, I got into that school based off my art. I met people based off my art. I kept doing some shows here and there, but my career was interior design. And then 
I eventually was like, you know what, I'm just going to teach art. So I started teaching art when recession was down. And then I decided to go back to get my master's degree in production design. So I basically started doing film architecture and designing for film and television sets in Los Angeles, California. And that was amazing. However, (laughs) you are working for anywhere to 10 to 12 and maybe even 15 hours a day. You don't have time for yourself. (laughs) And there wasn't a lot of painting going on. And even though I, um, I would consider myself quite successful, I was doing exactly what I wanted to do. Mm. I was happy. I was working in my field. I was making money, but I was not making any art. (laughs) I had no time. I was not painting. And it wasn't until um, my husband and I had our daughter where I just looked up and I was just like, I don't want nobody else raising my kid. I want to stay home. Mm. Can I stay work? <laughs> mm-hmm. And it was like after having baby, I almost like started to doubt, like, do I even still know how to draw? Can I still paint? Like, mm. I just it just was a struggle. So mm. even though I knew, like Eric was saying, I knew what made me happy. And I knew, I felt like what my purpose was. Art always got me into the door somehow. And then when I got in the door, I ended up doing something else. I didn't like push my artwork, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. I just, I did, I felt like working with her helped me kind of organize and strategize how I'm going to pursue my art career. Because it's like, yes, I have this great experience in other areas that involve art, but I never actually pushed the art. Not seriously. I didn't give it what I call a honest effort. You know what I mean? And her program really helped me organize and strategize and kind of almost try to get my time back because I was just all over the place. Like after motherhood, I just became almost discombobulated about how to manage my time. Mm. And like, Mm. just this morning you know I would tell her I can't even check my email girl like it's just like simple stuff. <laughs> you know I'm getting to the point now I'm like okay set that timer 15 minutes you're doing this when that's over stop go do something else like mm. you have to break things down into small slices so that you can actually achieve your goals otherwise you're looking up one day you're looking at this to-do list and you're like dang I wrote that two months ago and mm. I only checked off x amount of things and I used to um like how you were saying, some women say, oh, I can't do this. I can't do that. Right. I've said that before. I've been there. I know where mm-hmm. that gets you. Mm-hmm. <laughs> right, right. So exactly. I had to change my mindset. Mm-hmm. I had to say, you know what? I can do this. Mm-hmm. My issue was I didn't know how to do this. Right. So when you get to the point where you have enough confidence in yourself to say, okay, I know I can do this. I know I'm worthy. I know I'm talented. Now what? (laughs) Right. right. You have to start to do that research and move from the next phase of putting in the legwork to figure out the steps that you need to do. And then once you start figuring out those steps, you have to actually do those steps. Because if you don't do the homework and do the work and do those steps, you're not going to get anywhere. Once you start doing that, the next steps are going to start to reveal themselves. And next mm. thing, and then you can just start that rotation and start moving forward. You're like, oh, I didn't think of this. Da, 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 da. Like, I have to write stuff down. Mm. I'm a visual person. My, my sketchbook is hilarious. It's more notes than drawings because I can see everything in my head. I think I'm going to do that vision board and just make it visual because, you know, a <laughs> Pinterest board can only go so far. <laughs> but her, her program really helped me kind of reclaim that time back, steal it back. And it's like, there's always going to be dishes. My kid's always hungry, like literally always hungry. (laughs) There's always going to be something to do, but you have to not just think about it and want it, but you have to carve out that time and take it back because time waits for no one, you know? And that's one of the things that I'm really glad that I signed up with Erica for is so I can be like, okay, Let's go. How am I going to do this? I'm still working through the stuff she got. She, um, her and I work with. It's just, you know, making time to do it and actually getting it done instead of talking about it. Don't talk about it. Be about it. You know, <laughs> the, uh, again, a wonderful testimony. Both of you, this really you're, you're bringing alive the process. So 
Erica, yeah. what's next? So, all right, you've, 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 uh, the, we got, you talking about step one, you know, we got heard step two, step three, what's, what's next? Um, well, after that, with the accountability piece, there's community that's involved that helps you activate your accountability and a number of other things. But for everyone who is listening or for anyone who's considering even like what a journey to purpose would look like for them, I would first encourage them to begin to understand their joy, like really being honest with themselves and getting clarity around what it is that they truly want in this season. And I believe that, again, your joy is one of the best places to start but also understanding what your strengths are. So um, I've created a resource called the Joy Gem Superpower Quiz <laughs> to help um, people understand themselves better and kind of shine a light on what their Joy Gem power is. And that is essentially the thing that radiates out of you so effortlessly and how it can align you with the life of your dream and maximize your potential, no matter where you are in your journey. Um, you know, can, can you put can you put that at some point when we're talking in the link? Put that yeah. put the link to the test in in uh, in, in the in the chat. But but let me Joy, let me ask you. So so there's a difference between joy and fun, I assume, because my my fun I could do some fun things that aren't necessarily healthy or legal or or what you know. So is that so differentiate because it doesn't mean you do you know bad things. So yeah, the difference between fun and joy for the audience. Yes. So when I look at joy, I think of the things that align you with your higher calling, right? The mm -hmm. things that yeah. light you up and kind of like elevate. It, it even goes beyond um, the surface level of fun because a lot of things can be fun, but it's like, what is the thing that elevates your soul? Almost like a spiritual, like right. a spiritual okay. high, you know, mm -hmm. the thing that gives you that high feeling, that substance free. Um, yeah. <laughs> that is what aligns you with your joy. Listen, see, this is why I work with entrepreneurial moms because I know the, the juggle is real. Okay, you can turn it on. Thank you. Um, what was I saying? Sorry, <laughs> oh yeah, the difference between fun and joy. Um, but when you think about fun, I think the difference is kind of like joy and happiness, right? Mm -hmm. Happiness, I believe, is very surface level. It's like, oh, happiness is fickle. But when you think of joy, it's deeply rooted. So that even when a lot of hard things come your way, you're still rooted enough where you're not going to break. You know, you may sway a little bit, but you haven't lost sight of what the actual goal is or the vision is. Right. And when I think of fun, it's kind of the same thing where it's like, okay, and, and almost thinking about passion and purpose. You can be passionate a lot about a lot of things, but they may not necessarily be aligned with your purpose. So um, the idea is to really understand what motivates you, but also why it motivates you. And I think that um, the moment you're able to get clarity around that, then it kind of sets you up to really be successful on your journey, whatever uh, may happen along the way. I hope that answers it. Yeah, yeah no, that, no, that's a great answer because it's it's easy to confuse. I think a lot of people are stuck on that that fun and think that that's joy, but at that higher purpose is, I love that, I love that definition. So yeah. uh, and, and there's also, I think when you think of, um, I'm sorry, I forgot to mention the bit that you mentioned about where something may not necessarily be good for you, but you do it anyway, thinking that it's like fun. I think when it comes to things like that, it's really, again, understanding why, but also understanding how you'll feel after you do the thing. Like, mm. because right. again, right. if it has that fleeting feeling of like, oh, I feel great now, but then right after you feel crappy, like, was it actually fun? I don't think so. Right. So when you really begin to align yourself with joy, you don't have that same like residue that comes off of just doing the thing for the moment that feels really good in the moment, but then doesn't have that lasting feeling. Um, and that's what joy does for you versus fun. That's wonderful. I, I I think of the fast food analogy. You go there and you, you you have fast food. It's great when you have it, and then you like feel lethargic afterwards and horrible afterwards. And that's that's not joy. That's you know that's <laughs> temporary fun. So, so can I add so, to that? I'm sorry. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, yeah. Um. So I just want to bounce back off of what Shaz was saying earlier about her changing her mindset, and I think that's part. That's a huge part in and in, in your joyful journey and fun and joy. So. Um, it's not easy. You know, it's easy to talk about. I want to have fun. I want to be happy. I want to find joy. Those are, okay, what makes, what's fun for you? Okay, you can hang out with your friends. That's fun. What's it doing for you, right? 
So once you know what, who you want to be, um, you start taking steps into the way you make decisions and what, you, what you're gonna do is, okay, um, I'm gonna have McDonald's today. That's what I want, cause it's fun. Mm. Wait, but who do I wanna be? And does this get me there? Mm. Like you have to kind of check your stuff, yourself in every step. And that's a whole mindset shift. That's right. not just something that you say today and you don't, you do it every once in a while. It's consistency. Mm -hmm. and it's mindset and it's really sad because most of the time the things that hold us back is yes the fear that Erica was mentioning but also our environment who's mm -hmm. around you who's motivating you to go get McDonald's and who's motivating you to go you know do something else take a walk I'm not saying go to the gym and like go work I don't do that but you know some people do they have that's their that's their healthy lifestyle um uh, for me, like I play basketball, that's fun, but that has nothing to do with my ultimate goal and who I want to be. That's just my temporary fun for the day, you know? Um, and I think that who you're having coffee with every day and who you're deciding to give your time to, to have lunch with is something that you need to decide if that person is going to help you get to where you're trying to be internally with yourself. We all have a moral compass, right? We have that childhood friend. And so we stay in this friendship of 25 years because mm -hmm. 25 years of commitment, that's great. Are you aligned? Do you mm -hmm. want the same things? And I don't mean same things like Shaz is an artist and I'm a hairstylist. We don't want the same thing, but mm -hmm. I can see her working on herself. I can see her wanting to be a better version of herself. I, she can see that I'm trying to do the same thing. So that's what I mean by aligned. You don't have to want the same things in life you just have to take the advice of the people that are doing the things that you want to be doing mm -hmm. don't take the advice of the person that you've just known for years and still doing the same thing they've been doing 10 years ago and I think that that's the hardest part for a lot of people because you are 100% affected by the people that you're surrounded by and surrounded with and um, that's why this journey is not going to be easy yeah, it's yeah. never going to be easy well, so, so Gerard, Professor Gerard Farias, who's a, a friend and professor at FDU, I don't know if, if Erica, were you a student of his? I'm, I'm pleased to see him on here. I'm, I'm wondering. So he asked a very, very good question. Does the content of the purpose matter? You know, that it should focus on something larger than yourself, larger than ourselves. Does that content of purpose matter with joy? Oh, my goodness. I love this question. Um, and the content of your purpose does not matter in like what it is that you think you in like what it is that you're doing because purpose for every person looks different because you're born with purpose. I, I think that that's the question that you're asking, but the perspective of joy when considering one's purpose is one that I choose to take and that's what I teach because it's actually a way to align yourself with the things that make you feel good. And so it's a selfish act, right? Because it's really selfish. I get to do what I love doing all day. It comes so easily to me. Like I get to talk to people about joy and purpose. Icing gets to do hair. Shaz gets to paint pictures and design houses. It makes her feel good. But you understand that it's actually an act of service. Like you focusing on yourself, you prioritizing the things that make you feel good is so that you can give it to other people and show up in the world in a way that allows you to serve them, but doing it in a way that doesn't drain you. It energizes you. It motivates, it, it keeps you motivated and moving forward, but then it also motivates and inspires others to figure out what makes them feel good. Right. Like one of the biggest, and it's like the highest form of a compliment that I, I receive, but something that a lot of people often say to me is you have so much energy. Oh my goodness, your energy is contagious. And for a really long time, I didn't think much of it. I would just say, thank you. You know, the polite courteous, like, thank you. Oh my gosh. But now I realize just how much of a compliment that is, because that means that I'm showing up as my most authentic, transparent and vulnerable self, but in showing up exactly as who I am, who I was born to be, who God has placed me here to be. And in the way that he's He's designed me because it comes so effortlessly, it's, it's something that allows me to show up in a radiant way, but it, it transfers to other people. 
I don't have to do anything other than be myself. Mm -hmm. And that is like the highest gift. That is such a gift for so many people who right now are trying to be something that they're not, portray themselves as something that they're not, they're faking it till they're, they make it. And I think that's like, mm, I like to look at it as faith it till you make it, right? Like step into the power of who you are and like who you aspire to be in the direction that you desire to go. But you really shouldn't fake it because faking it isn't sustainable. That's what drains people. That's what keeps them um, from really actually activating their purpose wholly and fully because it's, it's work to be something that you're not. So um, to answer your question, I don't think that it matters what your purpose is necessarily as long as you are doing it in a way that aligns with who you were born to be um, because then that allows you to show up for other people, but it allows you to do it in a selfish way um, that's not like negative. <laughs> Great, great answer. And uh, um, Joel Harmon was saying, love the idea of purpose and service. But let me ask the question to build on. And this is this is society has become fake. Everything's fake. Social media is fake. You know, you're taking pictures of food. You're looking your best self. You feel bad about yourself because you don't look like somebody else's fake self. You know, how do you become authentic? How do you find joy in this time? Again, I have a 17 year old daughter, so I'm very, very connected with Oh, I only got a hundred likes. Oh no, I, I need a, you know, my world is falling apart. So, so how do you deal? And you're all, you're all much younger than me and you're, you're in this world. How do you deal with this in this, this, this world that we're in now to really find joy in your authentic self? Any of, any of you? Um, I, can I, I'll start, I guess. Please, yes. uh, in, in my industry, it is 100% everything you're saying times a million because we have the stereotype of fitting the molds of looking a certain way. And you have to be present on social media to get new clients and you have to show your face and you have to do videos. You gotta do all the things. Um, it's overwhelming when it's gotta be perfect. And the how is just to do it. Mm -hmm. Don't try to make it perfect, right? Um, your first time making a video on Instagram, your first time going live on Instagram, your first time adding a story on Instagram. People want to see your face. People want to hear your voice. They want to know, they want to feel like they know you. Mm -hmm. And everybody is trying to be real. Everybody's trying to be authentic and nobody is giving them the space to do it because everybody's doing the, the fake filters and whatever. Right. So right. when you show up, with no makeup or with your hair undone or waking up out of bed and you look tired or your kid woke you up at 2 a.m. and you haven't slept and you show up on that social media platform just to do it, just to say I'm here, you allow a safe space for other people to be able to do the same thing. And it's hard it goes back to the fear, right? You don't want to do it because, oh my God, I look so pale. Oh, my eyes look so tired, you know, but you just have to press record and go. And when you mess up, you're relatable, mm -hmm. right? Like you just need to be relatable. Everybody behind the camera when, this, when it's off is doing the same thing, which right. is just being themselves. So just try, you have to kind of try to just be the one to give start the initiative, right? You have to like start the movement kind of in the, in a small scale. Mm -hmm. and, and I assume you, you surround yourself with, with, with people who are, who are the same. So part of, I think, is that you're hanging with people who are valuing these likes and, and not valuing themselves. And so if you can try to find that group of friends, as you were saying earlier, find the group of entrepreneurs, find the people that care about you, care about something bigger than themselves. And so it's, it's, it's sometimes hard. Other comments? Shaz, did you want to say anything, or, or Erica? Mm -hmm. I was gonna, I was gonna toss it to Shaz because I feel like this is something we've worked on, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I want to see what her thinking is now that, like, we've done this work and, um, you know, where she was before, but also like how she engages with it now because this is like a thing for us. <laughs> yeah. Uh, ask the question again directly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so, so the Fed now again. Now I understand you were in the LA movie industry, which is ground zero of fakeness. <laughs> I mean, that's, that's, that's fake, the, yeah, as fake as, as human beings can get. And, and so, I stand out like a sore thumb because I am a jeans and t-shirt kind of girl. I work behind the scenes. People say, oh, you should be in front of the camera. No, 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 no. 
I'm good where I'm at. <laughs> I don't like to, I don't care to get made up and dolled up. That was one of the things Erica and I talked about. I was like, oh, I don't even feel like taking a picture with my art just to, <laughs> like, I just, I just, I'm just, I'm real chill kind of person. And everything that you see on social media about it being fake, that is one of the biggest turnoffs for me. But um, like the other young lady was saying, if you just show up, <laughs> you're relatable. And that's one of the things I struggle with. I struggle with just showing up. I found it to be extremely um, distracting to my process. Like a lot of artists will record themselves doing art and record themselves doing painting or drawing or whatever their craft was. I look at that and I'm in awe of that because I'm like, I don't wanna have to set up a camera and think about what I'm doing while I wanna do. I just wanna create my art. I'll show you when it's done. I'll take a picture every now and then, but it just, for me, it didn't bring me any joy to try to do it the way other people in my space was doing it. It was extremely distracting. Right. And when I tried it, I didn't even like what I created. So now I'm wasting time and energy, you know? So I think you just have to kind of break things down and figure out what works best for you and then do it that way and make your own space. And, make, and it's like, hey, if I show up, you know, with my bonnet and no makeup on, this is, this is what it is. I'm gonna be in my bonnet. <laughs> with my makeup on no makeup on and this is this is my authentic self and you know the more people see you do that the more they can really relate to what you're doing you don't have to go back and try to be something that you're not because that is what's going to make it exhausting mm -hmm. the uh yeah oh Erica, my goodness yeah. Um, yes to all of this. Yes, yes, yes. And more yes. <laughs> but I, to piggyback off of what both Ison and Shaz has said, I think that that's the power of community and understanding the power of your purpose, your perspective, and your ability to kind of um, find your people. I, I always talk about like, tribe vibes you know you need to find the the tribe that matches your vibe and one of the things that i love about the work that i do it's a multi-passionate creative because again it all ties to purpose but for a very long time i think i was neglecting this part of my purpose in creating things and even considering um the journey up to becoming a joy strategist um, understanding how how closely the two things were were related and understanding that you could create content that connects with joy um, but understanding how and why you're you're even creating the things that you're creating right going back to understanding your gifts understanding your talents understanding your perspective understanding the the role in which you are meant to serve while you're here i think helps make that process of creating content a lot easier but it also takes the fakeness out of it because you're showing up again as yourself not to get likes because i mean what's a like honestly i feel like this is another thing where they've embedded right. this idea that like likes are currency but if you have a business your likes are not going to pay your bills. Okay. <laughs> like, <laughs> having a bunch of followers. I mean, like there was one point and I'm not going to lie. I used to be one of those people where I think I did a podcast episode about this, where I was like, oh yeah, at one point I wanted 30,000 people to follow me on YouTube. But then when I really thought about it, it's like, why did I want all those people following me? What was the purpose? You know? And at that stage in my journey, I didn't, completely understand what the purpose was. And then you hear people that have like 2.3 million followers, but you can't get them to, they, they can't get their followers to, to buy 100 t-shirts. Like right, right. it's not about having people following you for the sake of following you. You want an engaged community. You want people who know you, like you, trust you, yes. But you also want people who care about um, your journey because it helps them with theirs or it inspires them in, their, in, in what it is that they're choosing to do, even if you don't do the same thing. And I think that that's why um, understanding the power of cultivating community based around authenticity is so important. Um, and that's why I love the multi-passionate um, or the creative consultant piece of the journey as well and working with entrepreneurial women and just bringing them back to understanding, well, why is it that you wanna do this again? Like, how does it actually serve your mission? How does it align with your vision? But most importantly, does this, whatever it is that you're choosing to do, even bring you joy? Because there are so many people putting out all of these trendy videos of like the TikTok trends and like 
the dances. And I mean, yes, that's all good and dandy. It's fun. But when you think about why most people are doing this, it's like so that they are the algorithm, the magical, mystical algorithm puts them in front of more people. But it's like, all right, cool. Once you're in front of more people, what does this actually mean for you? Like, how are you serving them? And a lot of not a lot of people, I don't want to say a lot of people, but even thinking about the younger generation, I don't think that this is necessarily something that they consider. So they're now putting all their time, energy, and resources into these tech platforms um, that are free, but really they, it, it comes at a cost. It comes at the cost of your time, your energy, your life. <laughs> if you're spending like six or seven hours a day for some of the younger people, even more um, investing into these platforms and all of your self-worth and your your value yeah. is being placed on these technology um, things. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I think that just understanding what brings you joy and again, understanding why yeah. um, is really, really important in this process and understanding that the moment you show up truly, like wholly, authentically, powerfully as yourself and your purpose, that's really when you're able to find your tribe that matches your vibe and that's really um kind of what establishes that uh snowball of success you know well, well, well see, i think it's very powerful I mean, and in fact you know here this is this is the the book i wrote on influence this 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 influence and what and, and that everything is influenced so part of this is getting people to realize how they're being influenced and people just don't understand that that and, and so you are and, and we use the term influencer wrong you all are influencers you're the ones they count. The influencers, because they have a lot of people watching them on social media, really don't influence, and usually not even in a positive way. And so I think part of this and part of the message for even, even those of us that have been around uh, many more years, you know, is to really look at, look at our tribe, as you say. Look at our influencers. You know, let's make sure that we should really check to see what tribe it, we're in. And that is one of the keys. And I've learned this with, I don't care if you're a woman, a man, a tall, short, whatever. That's one of the keys of success. If you have the right tribe, then, then you can beat the world. If you have the wrong tribe, they'll drag you down and drown you. And so, uh, so it's, it's, it's important. So we have about, about five minutes left. What are, this, is, this is wonderful and, and some, some brilliant, brilliant stuff. Any other, other comments? The, oh, I, here we have Gerard is suggesting a book. Emily S. Fani Smith, The Power of Meaning, Finding f Fulfillment in a World Obsessed with Happiness. <laughs> sounds, like it ties, sounds like it ties right into what you're saying. Thank you. Thank you, Gerard. Um, uh, other comments? What, what, what other things uh, should, we, what should we cover before? I have a few other questions, but I want to make sure we get all that you want to get out, Erica, before we go. Um, I would just really, again, I mean, I don't want this to sound like a plug, but it's because I'm so obsessed with this work and everyone finding joy, especially in this season. I would really, really love, like, it would bring me the most joy to see everyone today take the Joy Gem Superpower Quiz, because a lot of the things that we've spoken about today, as far as community, understanding your voice, understanding your perspective, uh, getting clarity around your power, a lot of these things can begin to be illuminated through this quiz, um, even in understanding your power and how it connects with other people's um, power. When I think about the gems, you know, um, and understanding how your joy gems can really just illuminate not only you, but everyone else. So, um, again, I really hope that you guys take advantage of this resource. Um, it takes 90 seconds. It's free and it's fun. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, no, it's it's wonderful. And so, um, so the link is in there. So, make sure you before we go off, make sure you uh, you click on it. So, so I, again, as I as I look at 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 you, what advice you have? You know, they're young entrepreneurs. I was talking to a woman yesterday who uh, who developed this. She had it. She has her own cleaning business, but developed these natural products and sold from her house forty thousand last year. And Shark Tank called her about being on and she said, I'm not ready. And so she's a woman from Jamaica and, and, and doing this. And so just a dynamo, um, you know, but she didn't realize some of the sexism and racism she's experienced here in America that she didn't have as much in, in Jamaica will be the sexism. And so, so, so a young woman coming up, trying to, trying to be an entrepreneur, trying to be successful. What are the three of you, what words of wisdom, what do you know now that you wish you knew before when you were just getting into business? Who wants to go first? Because I can talk about this all day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
Anybody? Okay, so I'll I'll start. Um, I would say to just trust yourself. Mm -hmm. um, I think that a lot of times it can be very easy to dismiss the things that you know, mm -hmm. um, especially the things that you know about yourself mm -hmm. um, or go by what other people think of you when at the end of the day, it doesn't matter what other people think about you or what it is, uh, about what it is that you do as long as you know who you are. Like the mm -hmm. moment you get clarity in, in who you are, what your purpose is. It's like the world really becomes your oyster. Yeah. And also understanding that entrepreneurship, this is one thing I'm gonna say, and I, it may sound some type of way, especially, no, because this is an entrepreneurial space, right? We know what it yeah. is. Yeah, yeah. But uh, I think that entrepreneurship right now is highly glamorized. You know, when you go online and everyone's like, boss up, be a boss today, yada, yada, yada. You know, that's all good and dandy, but entrepreneurship is not for the faint of heart. It right. does require oh. work. It yeah. requires work. Um, and the moment you understand what brings you joy, that work becomes so much easier. Because I think half the battle and even owning a business is just getting up to do it every day. <laughs> Especially yeah. when things get hard, because things will get hard. The same way they will when you have a job, you know, if you're working for someone else and like you have a bad day, they come up in entrepreneurship as well. Yep. But the difference in in choosing entrepreneurship is that you get to decide what it is that you create. And when you align your work with your joy, it gets a lot easier to create sustaining habits um, that really lead you to success. And the success may not always be the dollar sign. Right. It may not be how much you have in your bank account. It could really be like the impact that you're having in other people's lives. So um, aligning your entrepreneurial efforts with your joy, it just makes everything so much easier. Um, and then enjoying the ride. I think mm -hmm. that that's one thing that, um, can be really hard sometimes, but I always look at moments of my journey where I may not have understood the value of the process that I was going through. Like it was really right. hard in the moment, like graduating from FDU in a recession, crying every day, mm -hmm. um, becoming a mom. And then like crying when I found out, not because I didn't want to have children, but because I felt like a part of my life was over, you know, like I felt like, well, here I go. I have to go work at a boring corporate job, you know, doing stuff that I hate. And all of that was a lie. Like we get to choose our destinies. We get right. to, right. we get to, we get to create the lives that we love. So I just want more people to trust themselves and really understand that whatever, whatsoever you believe in, this is biblical, right? This isn't an original, but like whatsoever you believe in your heart is what your, what your mind thinks and what your, your mouth creates and words have power. So speak life to, into yourself, speak joy over your life and um, get clarity about what it is that you want. And if you need help figuring out how to do that, I'm here, but I don't want to keep going. Well, you ladies well, let me know. well, we're unfortunately at time, but uh, I, I want to thank the three of you. You're amazing, an amazing panel. Um, and um, um, I know you, you are incredibly successful. You're going to be even more. We're here to help at FDU Rothman Institute. So, um, um, and um, I, this is such a great session. We may have another, just to do another session. So, uh, want to thank oh, all three of that. you. Yes, yes. <laughs> we'll, we'll do we'll do another one. And and uh, but thank you all. I want to thank everybody for watching today. Have a wonderful weekend. Stay thank warm you. if you're in if you're in New Jersey and New York. You, you know. <laughs> So, uh, you know, it's, um, um, this is really, really good. So it's so very, very inspirational. So thank you all. Take care. Have a good one. Thank you. Thank Take you care. so much. Bye-bye.